So this question is asking you to calculate the remainder when this number is divided by 100. So there are multiple ways to solve this question. Okay. So let's start with approach one. So it's always easy to find the remainder when you divide by 100. Right, it's always easy. Let's take a simple example. Okay, I want you to divide 125 by 100. I'm just uh, sticking to the school uh, division method. I'm dividing by 100. I, I need to find the remainder. How many hundreds are there in 125? 100, right? So it's going to be 100. Then what's the remainder? 25 is the remainder. Correct. So that means the last two digit will be your remainder. Let's take another example. Let's say you have uh, 725. I need to divide this by 100. How many hundreds are there? There are 7 hundreds. Uh, in 725, 7 times 100 is 700. You have the left over is 25 will be the remainder. See? What happens? Let's say I'm dividing 800 by uh, 700. Uh, let's say 800 by 100. What is the remainder? See, 8 hundreds are there here. 8 times 100 is 800. The remainder is 0. Or let's say I'm, I'm taking another example. Let's say you have... Uh, 405. I need to find the remainder when you divide 405 by 100. So let's say I'm 405, I'm dividing by 100. So how many hundreds are there? Four hundreds are there. So 4 times 100 is 400. The remainder is going to be 5. 5 will be the remainder. So you can see a pattern here, right? See, the last two digit of the number will be the remainder when you're dividing by 100. See, here in this case, 25 is the remainder. Here also you can see 25 is the remainder. Here, it's zero because last two digits are zero. That's why it's a multiple of 100. So that's the reason remainder is zero. But here in the last case, you are getting a single digit as the remainder because the last two digit, if you analyze it, one of them, second last digit is zero and the unit digit is five. So always remember when you divide by 100, the remainder, if you want to find the remainder, you just need to analyze the last two digits. That's it. Now let's analyze the answer choices. If you analyze the answer choices, you can see that all of them are single digit numbers. So that means if you're dividing this number by 100, you are getting a single digit remainder. So that means we can confirm that the, this number, this entire product is going to be a sum number ending with 0 and one more value. This has to be the right answer. I can confirm that the second last digit is 0 because all the answer choices are single digit remainder. So I can clearly say that the second last digit of this big product is going to be 0. And the unit digit is what you need to find to get the answer here. So the question is basically asking you to calculate the unit digit of this product. How will you find the unit digit of the product? So it's not a practical idea to multiply all these numbers to find the unit digit. For that, instead of that, what you need to do is just to analyze the pattern here, okay? Let's take the first two numbers, okay? I need to multiply 85 times uh, 87, okay? And let's see what would be the unit digit in the multiple here. So, 5 sevens are 35, you have 3 here, 8 sevens are 56, you have 3 as carry, so it's going to be 59, then you have 0 here, 8 fives are 40, 0 again, 4, 6, 8, 8 eights are 64, 4 as carry, it's going to be 68, then you add all of them, right? 5, this is how you do the multiplication, right? So it's going to be 3, 1, 7, right? This will be the entire product. But the unit digit of the product is only 5. So this is what you are concerned about. What is the unit digit? 5. So to get the unit digit of the product, only what matters here is the unit digit of the numbers you are multiplying. See, 5 sevens are 35 so 5 is here 3 is going as a carry so only 5 will be there as the unit digit of the product so that means to calculate the unit digit of this product only you just need to check the unit digit of the numbers so that means i'm just listing down the unit digit of these numbers so 5 times 7 times 9 times 1 times 5 times 6 that will give you the unit digit of this entire product okay i'm just listing down it here so the unit digit of this product is same as 5 times 7 times uh, 9 times 1 times 5 times 6. 
So what you can do is you can just uh, calculate it. Okay, so five sevens are uh, number ending with five. Again, you're gonna multiply only just focus on the unit digit. That is what you are concerned about. Okay, five times nine. Again, you will get a unit digit five because five nines are forty-five. So it's gonna be ending with five. Again, you are multiplying this by one. The unit digit is five. Again, this is gonna be multiplied by five. Five fives are twenty-five. I'm just striking down only the unit digit. It's five. Then you have five six are thirty. The unit digit or it's gonna be ending with zero. So you can say that the unit digit of this entire product is gonna be ending with zero. So that means the the last two digits are zero zero. So it's gonna be a multiple of hundred. So when you are multiplying, when you are dividing a multiple of hundred or a number ending with two zeros divided by hundred, the remainder is definitely gonna be zero. Because it's exactly divisible, so you can clearly say that zero is your answer. And there is few shortcuts you can definitely use because you don't need to entirely do this multiplication because I can say it's a little bit time consuming. So what you can always look for is if there is multiple of five in the product, if one of the multiple, if one of the product is a, one of the number is a multiple of five. If another number is an even number, definitely the product is going to be ending with zero. So that means any multiple of five, any multiple of five, when you multiply that number by an even number, it's always be ending with zero. Always ends with zero. You can take any example. Let's say fifteen times uh, twenty-six. See, fifteen times twenty-six, it's going to be ending with zero. Five six are always ending with zero, so you can see that. See, one of the number is ending with five. See eighty five. It's multiplied. You just need to look for any other even number here. So you can see ninety six an even number, right? So definitely eighty five times ninety six or all these product will definitely end with zero. You don't need to even look for these uh, case. Okay, so it's I just explained to you to make sure that you know the process. But here in this. question you don't need to even use it you just need to use this logic that multiple of 5 when you multiply with any other even number definitely uh, it's going to be a number ending with zero so for that reason i can say your answer is option a that is zero will be the remainder let's try approach number 2 so approach number 2 so what you can do is you can try to divide this okay you have 85 times 87 times 89 times 91 times 95 times 96 divided by 100. You can check whether it's exactly divisible. That's one thing. But what you can do is whether it's exactly divisible or not. That means if it is exactly divisible, your answer is zero. If it is not, it could be any one of them. Still, you need to look for the approach number one. Okay. So 85 you can divide by five. It's 17. 100 is going to be divided by five. You have 20. Now again, you can see one more five is there. You can divide this by five, which is nineteen. Again four, so ninety six is exactly divisible by four, right? It's gonna be two. Remainder is one twenty four. So I can see that it's exactly divisible by hundred. So clearly, I can say the remainder is zero. That's one more, uh, another approach that you can definitely use. So I prefer to use approach number one. Because in approach number two, you can check whether this number is divisible by hundred. That's it. So if it is divisible, your answer is zero. If it is not, it could be any one of this answer. That means you need to again find the unit digit to find the exact answer. So for that reason, I prefer to use approach number one. That means uh, finding out the unit digit of this uh, entire product better than the second approach. Also, I would like to give you uh, some tips. If you want to find the the number how the number is ending with how many zeros, what you need to do is you just need to find how many fives are there in the product. When you factor it out, how many fives are there? So remember, a five when you multiply by a two, both of them will pair up. And will give you a zero in the unit digit. So if there are two fives, when you have corresponding two twos to pair it with these fives, so definitely it will be the product will have two zeros in the end product. Or if there are three fives in the product, and corresponding you should have 
three twos so that each one of five will pair with the corresponding two so that there are three pairs of five and two that means the product will be ending with three zeros so number of zeros the product is ending with if you want to calculate that you just need to look for how many fives are there in the product and do you have enough twos to pair it with these fives to get the zeros? So let's start, try out this in this case. So what I'm going to look for is how many fives are there in the product. So 85, I can clearly see the F5 there, right? So try to factor it out. So 85 can be written as 5 times 17. So definitely one five is there. So 87, there is no 5, 89, no, 91, no, but 95, there is one five, right? So 95 can be written as 5 times 19. And also in 96, there are no fives. So in total, you are having two fives in this entire product when you factor these numbers. There are two fives there, right? So what you need to check is whether you have uh, two twos here in the product to pair it with these corresponding fives so that the number will be ending with two zero. We just need to check that. So definitely all these numbers are odd numbers. 85 is odd. There is no two there. 87 is odd. 89, 91, 95, all of them are odd numbers. So only even number here is 96. So you just need to uh, factor it, factor it out and see how many twos are there. Okay. So 96 can be written as two times uh, 48. Again, you can factor out 48 in terms of 2, right? So, you can again write as 2 times uh, 48 can be written as 24, 2 times 24. Again, it can be factored further. So, definitely I can say there are two 2s are definitely there. That's enough, right? So, one of the 2 will pair up with this 5 and other 2 will also pair up with this 5. So, definitely I can say that this entire product will be a big number but what we can confirm is that the ending will be two zeros. Definitely the number will be ending with two zeros. So that means the entire product is going to be a multiple of 100. So in that case, the remainder when you divide by 100 is going to be exactly zero. So this shortcut you can always use to find out the number is ending with how many zeros. You just need to look for how many fives are there in the product when you factor it out always keep that in mind it's like a tip for you that you can use whenever it's needed